and thank you so much for uh, clicking on this video. I thought I'd do a little bit of a different video today um, and I thought I would talk to you guys about some of my favorite art supplies. I know that this is uh, videos that I like to watch quite a lot on YouTube so hopefully you guys will find this interesting as well um, and because I use quite a lot of different art supplies I'm gonna be splitting uh, these videos up so it'll be like a little series and to start off with I thought I would start with the one thing uh, which I can be a little bit fussy about um, and which I think is super important and that is paper. So this is a little bit also like a sketchbook review slash uh, my favorite art supplies. Um, so yeah, so let's just dive into it, shall we? First off, I just wanted to say that I've only started keeping sketchbooks from this year. It was actually a business goal of mine for me to keep one sketchbook and start and finish it within the year. Uh, and as you can see, I have far surpassed that. Uh, now I've not finished all of these sketchbooks, but I'm pretty darn near close to quite a few of them. Um, so let's just get started. I'm going to start with the first sketchbook brand which I bought, which is actually two sketchbooks in one. Uh, so this is the very first one that I bought. Uh, it is an A4, um, just regular paper. Uh, I think it's like 170 GSM, doesn't even tell me. Um, but it's from Art Gecko. And I just bought these, uh, I think on Amazon even, uh, as thinking that I would be able to get through this in a year. Um, and it's nice, it's nice paper. It's nothing too fancy. It's definitely um, like quite flimsy in terms of paper. So I've only used this for ink drawings, but it was kind of keeping these, which got me into sketchbooks, which I am really thankful for. Um, this was, uh, as I said, the very first one. So this was an A4. And then I booked in on my very first wildlife drawing class uh, with my friend Natal. And I had to take a sketchbook or some paper with me. And I didn't want to take this big bulky sized A4 one with me. So I bought an A5 one instead. Actually really liked this size um, quite a lot. Uh, and actually have ended up finishing using this one uh, and I still have a few pages to go left in this one because I've just swapped to using A5. I just prefer the size of it. Um, it means I can just sort of chuck it in my bag and go with it and I've always got a sketchbook with me and so uh, yeah I just prefer using these. I did also try in the sketchbook using um, my watercolor pencils and it did buckle the paper a bit. I can't tell if you can tell there and also my pro markers uh, which did bleed through but I think that's fairly standard of any um, sketchbook paper. I don't think you're ever gonna get anything that like doesn't bleed through. Um, but uh, so I would suggest that if you did want to get the sketchbook that you only draw on one side and leave the back side blank. Um, it's nice paper, it's good quality, it scans really nicely. I really like the sketchbook, it's a nice little, uh, if you're just doing line drawings, nice little sketchbook to have. Um, and pretty cheap as well, which uh, is always quite nice if you're on a bit of a budget. The next sketchbook I have for you guys is um, one of my favorites. It is this one. This is the C Bright, C White um, of Brighton's sketchbook. This was actually a brand that was recommended to me by my friend Sophie um, from Sophmog. Uh, she used this uh, brand for her uh, 100 uh, days of flora and fauna illustrations that she did um, for the 100 day project and I noticed that she was using it a lot with watercolor and gouache and I wanted to find a sketchbook that I would be able to do the same in so I asked her if she wouldn't mind sharing the brand. Um, it's a really nice sketchbook. Um, the paper is really lovely and thick. It also folds out flat really nicely, which um, when you're drawing out on the go just makes it so much easier. Um, I actually ended up only using watercolor on one page for this sketchbook, but it did dry really, really flat, which I was really impressed with. And I would definitely be getting this again for watercolors um, and gouache and ink work because the paper seems to handle it really, really well. Absolutely one of my favorites. I wish I had done more color work in this and I will be buying myself another one pretty soon because I'm almost out of spare sketchbooks actually. 
the next one that I have for you is, is a De La Rani Melty Media pad. I bought this one because I wanted to try mixed media um, paper and it did say at the top that it was suitable for pencils, paints, inks, charcoal, and it's acid free. Uh, and it was A5 as well. And I didn't have one that flipped um, this way around. Although I suppose I could have done it with the see why it brightens um it just felt more natural and because of the nature of my work i thought i'd try working with it in portrait for a little bit and see how that works um and yeah i was really happy with this as you can see i used a lot of color in the sketchbook i like to theme my sketchbooks so this sketchbook was the one where i started you doing my animals on shape series um and then i kind of continued that through um for a lot of the sketchbook uh, I find that that just helps me when I'm feeling stuck and I don't know what to draw. Uh, if I have a steam sketchbook, then I'm a little bit like, okay, um, let's think about what animal on shape we can draw today. So yeah, really happy with the sketchbook. Used my Posca paint markers on here as well, and it handled it really, really well. Really thick paper. It is 250 GSM. Um, so it's not, it's, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, and it's also quite a lot of pages. It's 30 pages. Um, again, I wouldn't, uh, draw on both pages I, as some markers do bleed through. Um, I found that this was especially true with the pro markers, not so much with the Tombows, uh, but the pro markers for sure, uh, definitely bleed through. So just be aware, it's always worth double checking your paper um, with like a little tester, either on the very first or the very back page, just to see whether or not it will bleed through. And so to combat this, I just have a couple of pieces of A5 like scrap paper um, that I've pulled out of sketchbooks and I just use these underneath um, the page which I'm drawing on so that it will bleed through onto this rather than onto the next page um, because it does bleed for this one particularly it did bleed through sometimes onto the next page um so yeah the little couple of pieces of scrap paper are always handy to have that um you can see where like it's caught the ink before it came through so always useful um, but yeah other than that really nice sketchbook the only thing I really didn't like about it is that it's a soft cover as opposed to a hard cover and I found that um, sometimes when I was throwing it in my bag uh, I had to be careful to make sure that the cover didn't um, get, get scrunched up or anything because I was worried about the paper underneath um, the paper itself is actually better quality I think than the cover um, so it probably would have been fine but uh, it just made me a little bit worried and also I realized whilst working with the sketchbook actually I really don't like ring binder sketchbooks that much because there's a lot of movement here in the rings and when you're drawing it can really sort of like your page has got a lot of movement in it um, and that can be really really frustrating um, so I actually found whilst using this that I don't like these ring binder ring spiral sketchbooks. I pref much prefer um, to have like a fixed spine sketchbook instead. So my next two sketchbooks are actually the one I'm working on at the moment, uh, which is the Arteza sketchbook and also my Moleskin watercolor sketchbook. So I will talk about the Arteza sketchbook first. Um, I bought this one because it has perforated pages and the Arteza brand is a really interesting brand in that it seems to sort of hit that mid price range. Um, and I knew some people who had used the brand paper before and they said that they had really liked it, but I didn't realize that um, they were using the watercolor pads. So I, and I accidentally bought the mixed media pad. They are 180 GSM, which is not as much as the De La Rownies, Um, Or in fact, I think the Sea Bright, Sea White of Brighton, um, although that doesn't tell me what it is. Um, but it does take gouache really, really well. Um, the thing that I found that it doesn't take well is watercolour. Uh, it's almost as if the amount of water you have to put on for watercolour is just too much for the paper to handle. But it takes gouache really well. It does warp the paper a little bit, but it does scan nicely. And another reason why I don't like these spiral um, sketchbooks is that it, they're really difficult for me to scan in my scanner um, because of the way that it sits. 
uh, I always end up with bits that are not scanned and so it's really really difficult um, especially if I've drawn too close to the edge and which is why in my later sketches you'll see I've drawn this border and I try and keep my uh, sketch to the inside of the border so that when I scan it I know that sort of from past this point is where my scanner starts having issues um, so I would be really careful about that and I do love the texture of this paper I think it's really nice it's just textured enough for um, me when I'm using my gouache uh, to kind of give a little bit of uh, something to it it is differently textured on the back of every page than on the front so you can't use the backs I'm not sure if on the back it's more marker paper it feels a little bit smoother like marker paper so I'm not sure if it's designed in that way so that you paint on this side and then use markers on this side. I only used um, markers, my pro markers once um, in this sketchbook and it did bleed through quite badly but I wonder if I should have used it on this side as opposed to this side because the markers did tear up the paper quite a lot on this kind of rougher more textured side um, so I feel like on this side it would have been much better. I have another one of these sketchbooks I might play around with it and do the next one um, backwards and use it as a marker sketchbook. I haven't decided yet uh, but again love this sketchbook really nice size. The only thing I wish is that I wish that it wasn't a spiral bound sketchbook. Um, I love that you can perforate it's got perforated pages so that you can pull out your illustrations which would make it a lot easier for scanning um, but the thing with that is that then I would have to store all of those somewhere and I just find it so much easier to keep all my sketches in a sketchbook because I remember where sketches are in sketchbooks um, as opposed to having like random pieces of paper all over uh, my studio because as you can see my studio is pretty full as it is. Other than that it's a really really nice sketchbook and I really enjoyed using it. So the last brand, sketchbook brand, uh, that I'm going to talk to you guys about is Moleskin, um, and obviously Moleskin is, I guess, like the the granddaddy of all sketchbooks. Um, this is an A4 watercolor sketchbook, uh, but I actually got the sketchbook before I started my business. So this was a sketchbook where I didn't keep it, um, where I didn't consistently draw, and I decided that I needed to. Get better at consistently drawing. This is also the sketchbook where I did my first ever gouache illustration so it's always going to be really really special because of that. Uh, so with the sketchbook like all my others I've only been painting on one side of the paper um, and that's because I found that when I scan it if, I've sc if I scan uh, the bunny for example with the flying fox behind it my scanner does pick up the flying fox so I'm worried that if I was to paint on both sides of the paper that it would pick up um, the shadows of whatever I painted on the first page on the second page if that makes sense as frustrating as it is because I feel like I'm wasting the paper I just think that it's better in the long run um, but I really love this sketchbook so much um, it's such a joy to use it dries super flat um it's like the the cover is perfect the fact that it's not a spiral is perfect it scans really really easily i find it super super easy to use um and i do all of my big gouache pieces in this the only critique that I would have is that I don't like the size. The A4 size for me personally is just too big, but that's entirely a personal preference. Um, I did go ahead and buy a A5 version of this, so I will be trying that one soon and I'm really excited because I'm really excited to have that in my bag when I go out um, and for me to be able to sketch whilst I'm out and then come home and paint those sketches um, because, because I've not really been able to do that um, apart from in the Arteza sketchbook uh, I'm really excited to be able to do that but I love this sketchbook it's such beautiful paper it is on the more expensive side um, so I know that it's not feasible for everyone to try it but I think paper is so important because if you have good paper then you will get good results. You can have the best supplies in the world, but if you're using it on really awful paper, then you're not gonna get the results that you want from it. So I do think it's worth investing in good sketchbooks. Um, and uh, this is absolutely my 
perfect sketchbook. So that's it, a little bit of a different video for you guys today. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Like I said earlier, I plan on making some more videos about my favorite uh, materials, but seeing as paper is so, so important, I wanted to ha for it to have its own video. If you have any sketchbook uh, brand recommendations, then please drop me a comment below and let me know. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe and also hit the bell because apparently that helps me a lot with the YouTube algorithm in terms of being seen. Thank you guys so much and I will see you in the next video.